uh, good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the fourth quarter earnings call of mahanagar gas we have the management of mahanagar gas mr sanjeev datta the managing director mr sm ranade the chief financial officer and mr rajesh wagle the senior vice president marketing and projects i now hand over to the management for their initial comments Uh, before we begin i would like to mention that some of the statement made in today's discussion may be forward looking in nature and we believe that expectations contained in the statement are reasonable however the nature involves a number of risk and uncertainty that may lead to different results the risk and uncertainties relating to these statements include but are not limited to risk and uncertainties regarding fluctuations in sales volume fluctuations in foreign exchange other cost and our ability to manage growth I urge you to consider that quarterly numbers are not a reflection of long-term trend or an or an indication of full-year results. They should not be attempted to be extrapolated or interpolated into full-year numbers. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon to all of you, and welcome to Mohanagar Gas Limited Earnings Conference Call for the fourth quarter of financial year 2018-19. I would like to thank all of you who have connected for our earnings call today. The report published by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in October 2018 has mentioned that about 12 crucial years are left to act in order to save the world from severe climatic conditions. Carbon concentration which was approximately 392 ppm in 2015 has now reached to 414 ppm. At this rate, it could reach to alarming level of 550 ppm by 2050. No wonder India wishes to increase the share of natural gas in the overall indian energy basket as per vision 2030 report of pngrb natural gas demand will go up up to 746 mm cmd while its supply will go up to 475 mm cmd in 2029-30 hence the meeting hence meeting the growing demand of natural gas in coming years is going to be a big challenge in india City gas distribution has a share of about 8% of the total demand of natural gas. Of the total natural gas demand in the CGD sector, CNG contributes to nearly 50%. CNG presently constitutes 4% of total gas consumed. This will grow progressively to around 8% in years to come. With the completion of 10th CGD bidding round, CGD would be available in 228 GAs. comprising of 402 districts spread over 27 states and union territories covering approximately 70% of india's population and 53% of its geographical area mgl had applied for two gas namely mysore mysore mandya and chamrajanagar districts and alappuzha kollam and tiruvananthapuram districts under 10th cgd bidding round however we did not succeed in securing any of these gas now coming to mgl's operations we are rapidly expanding our cgd network in the existing areas of our, of our operation during the quarter 38866 domestic households were added today we have more than 1.14 million household customers supplied with pipe gas we have had a net addition of 54 industrial and commercial consumers and thus as on date we have over 3800 industrial and commercial customers we are now operating 236 cng stations supplying cng to 692000 vehicles and our aggregate of steel and pe pipeline network stands at 5310 km with respect to our raigarh ga we have about 8900 domestic png connections in uran and adjoining areas gas supply to major towns like pen uran and karjat is being planned through the virtual pipeline network to begin with in january 2019 the company has received critical permissions from various authorities for laying pipelines in raigarh ga three cng stations were added during the quarter and with this 10 cng stations are currently operational in raigarh presently cng sales in raigarh is 27000 kg and is expected to go up when some more cng stations become operational in coming months during the quarter we have seen a growth of 7.4% in overall sales volume over the corresponding quarter in the previous year cng sales volume grew by 6.9% domestic sales volume grew by 9.6% to 
while the industrial and commercial sector sales grew by 8.6%. Overall, the PNG volumes grew by 9%. Gross margin is higher in value terms in the current quarter as compared to corresponding quarter in the previous year because of higher volumes in CNG and PNG and better price realization across all customer categories. EBITDA margin was 29.6% at Rs. 214 crore in the current quarter as compared to 30% at Rs. 176 crore in the corresponding quarter of the previous year. Net profit after tax grew by 27.4% from Rs. 105 crore in the corresponding quarter of previous year to Rs. 133 crore in the current quarter. Compared to immediately preceding quarter, current quarter has lesser number of days and as a result, overall sales volume is lowered by 0.7%. Due to strike in BEST services, we lost some volumes and CNG volume is lowered by 1.1%. Domestic volume is lowered by 0.9%. However, the industrial and commercial sector grew by 1.5%. Gross margin grew marginally to 48.9% as compared to 48.8% recorded in the immediately preceding quarter. The company, however, faced a decline in the EBITDA of Rs. 7.91 per SCM as compared to Rs. 8.77 per SCM in the previous quarter due to lower INC sales realization and higher OPEX on account of CSR, repairs and, repairs and certain provisions considered. Net profit after tax declined to by 10.2% from Rs. 148 crore in the preceding quarter to Rs. 133 crore in the current quarter. During the year, overall sales volume grew by 9.2% compared to the sales volume of previous year. CNG sales volume also grew by 9.2%. Domestic sales volume grew by 10.7% and industrial and commercial sector grew by 7.8%. Overall, the PNG volumes grew by 9.2%. During the year, EBITDA has increased to Rs 8.22 per SCM as compared to Rs 7.91 per SCM in the previous year. However, gross margin is at 49.6% as compared to 53.7% recorded in the previous year. Net profit after tax grew by 14.3% from Rs 478 crore in the previous year to Rs 546 crore in the current year, enabled by higher volumes and improved EBITDA in rupees per SCM terms. With this, I conclude and would now like to open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star, then one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star, then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star, then 1. The first question is from the line of Probal Sain from Centrum. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. I had a couple of questions. One, would it be possible to share, uh, as in previous quarter, the, the industrial and commercial sales volume for this quarter separately? Yeah, industrial sales volume in MMSCMD terms in this Q4 was 0.233 and okay. commercial was 0 0.186. 0 0.186. This is in uh, Q4. Sir, is it? Do you would you have the Q3 number also handy? Uh, yeah, you can take down. Industry was 0.224. Yeah. And commercial was 0 0.180. 0.180. Okay. Sir, the uh, other uh, question I had was with respect to this uh, uh, other expenses. I think uh, the, Mr. Datta mentioned about the broad reasons. Is it possible to get a bit more specifics uh, given the sharp 19 odd percent increase in the other OPEX uh, number on a YOI basis? Yeah, some more clarity we can give. Uh, nearly additional 6 crores as compared to, you are talking probably with reference to previous quarter, right? Yeah, yeah, whichever, sir, YOY or QOQ, both ways it has actually gone up. Yeah. So, you know, whichever we, uh, data you have would be happy to have, sir. Uh, so, as compared to corresponding quarter, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, as compared to Q3, yeah. reason is because that will be the main concern probably of the people. Sure, uh, sure. That has dropped from 148 to 133 odd. Right. So, nearly 6 crores is on account of uh, different, different provisions. 
either it could be for inventory related obsolescence and other things then some uh, provisions we are making with reference to pipelines which we lay which we feel uh, may not be monetized immediately uh, right. there are certain provisions due to new accounting standard which has come in place also uh, okay. in case 109 with respect to expected credit loss and other things mm -hmm. that is approximately 6 crores uh, hit in this quarter q4 there okay. is some amount of additional OPEX in case of repairs and maintenance activities which okay. are the uh, previous quarter. Mm -hmm. these, uh, these are the main reasons for higher expenditure uh, between Q4 and Q3. Sir, is higher level of activity in Raigad by any means uh, a source of uh, the higher OPEX? Not I'm really. asking from a sustainability perspective in terms of what we should be looking at for FI20 in terms of run rate. We, we have already uh, informed earlier as well that generally Q3 and Q4 OPEX right. tends to be higher than Q1, Q2. Sure, sir. Sure. Uh, between Q3 and Q3, some ups and downs are always possible. Okay. So, the primary reason is obviously Q3 and Q4 will be higher than Q1, Q2. Right. If you want to talk about um, year-on-year -year expenditure and hmm. why that has moved further, the yeah. primary reason is with reference to as the operations increase, expenditure also tend to rise because substantial amount of expenditure is almost 100% variable. Sure. For example, if we talk about uh, power and fuel, which right. is almost 100% variable linked with right. uh, CNG volume, mm -hmm. the figure has uh, gone up from 105 crores last year to 116 crores that you will be able to observe in our annual account figures also. Right. Sir. Similarly, right. another important uh, accounting aid will be with reference to CNG dispensing charges. Mm -hmm. uh, that is also a substantial figure including of course provisions which we make. Another important figure will be with reference to LCV transportation. Wherever you know online CNG stations are not there, mm -hmm. you must be aware uh, we are required to transport the gas by way of caskets mounted on LCV. Right, sir. That also involves substantial expenditure and as volumes from so called doctor booster station has increased in this year as compared to previous year. The expenditure has obviously gone up nearly 6 to 7 crores on that account. Okay. Uh, there are also higher expenditure with reference to consumption of stores and spares, which is mainly with reference to CNG activity. Right. Some more details I think we will be able to get it from uh, our annual accounts um, uh, figures. Sure, sir. That is, that is very helpful. One last question. Uh, guidance on volumes uh, for next year remains at that 6 to 7 percent range. And can we get the number of stations that you are looking to add? for CNG and household connection target for 20? Yes, volume we will still maintain at uh, the 6 to 7 percent range. Okay. Business as usual scenario. Let's right. See. Some potential upsides, you know, happen. Okay. And, and number of CNG stations uh, to be added, sir? Any guidance on that? CNG stations, uh, we would be targeting uh, in the mid-20s. Okay. 20s and household connections the I think the earlier guidance was every year around 0.2 million or so does that maintain does that remain no no I think every year uh, we were adding about uh, 110,000 uh, burning customers okay and uh, that number can go up slightly so 110 to 120 is what we should work with right mm, yes that would be a fair number all right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. That's all. I'll come back if I have more. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Genal Fofalia from Turtle Star Portfolio. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening, sir, and congrats on this set of numbers. Uh, well, I have uh, a couple of questions. So my first question is, uh, uh, what's your total number of CNG stations uh, in the region that you operate uh, as on 31st March 2019? And out of that, how many stations are in Rigor? Hello. Excuse me, this is the operator. Participants, you are requested to stay connected while we check the management's line. Yeah.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently waiting. The line for the management is reconnected. So you may go ahead. We still have Jeanal Fofalia on the line with us. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Congrats on recent set of numbers. Uh, so I have a couple of questions. Uh, my first question is, uh, uh, how many CNG stations uh, do we have uh, as on 31st March 2019? And out of this, uh, how many CNG stations are in Rigor? Uh, As of 31st March, we had uh, 236 uh, stations uh, total. And uh, in Raigad, out of these 236, 10 are in Raigad. Okay. And um, how much do we plan to add uh, in FI20, that is CNG station, uh, in the regions that you operate as well as in Raigad? Put together, it would be about uh, 25 or so. Raigad could be between uh, 5 and 10. Raigad will be 5 and 10, right? Hello? Yeah, yeah, somewhere between 5 and 10. Okay. Uh, well, so my second question is, um, uh, what, what would your total uh, CNG consumption mean for the best buses? Sorry, can you repeat that? Best buses. Uh, for best buses, what is our total CNG consumption? That's our total volume. There are about uh, 1,800 buses. On an average, they consume about 55 kgs per day. 55 kgs? Per day, per bus. So it's about uh, 1 lakh kgs per day. 1 lakh kgs per day. And what is the total number of buses that you said? 1,800 CNG buses. Much. 1 lakh kgs per day of this, uh, that 1800 buses are consumed, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, my next question is, uh, in between, you know, I was aware that uh, we have submitted one catch-up plan uh, after discussing with Maharashtra government. So, what is the program on, those, on that uh, catch-up plan for Rigor? And number one, it is not submission to government of Maharashtra. It was catch-up plan was submitted to the PNGR, the regulator. And whatever catch-up plan we had submitted with reference to that, there are two aspects. One is domestic connections and another pipelines to be laid. In case of domestic connections, we are right on target whatever catch-up plan we had submitted. Whereas uh, pipelines related, the uh, things are progressing. Okay. Um, so when shall we start getting numbers from this? Pipeline and domestic uh, connection? Pipeline, right now I don't have ready-made figure, but uh, domestic connections is around 8,900 we completed. 8,900. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, well, so my last question would be uh, on city gas tenders. Uh, so in between, you know, we, were, we had submitted some city gas tenders. Uh, apart uh, in Maharashtra, uh, how many cities uh, have we submitted and uh, how many orders have we received so far? In Maharashtra, we have got the license for the Raigad district in 2015. In the last round of bidding, uh, we put our bids in two areas and none of them are in Maharashtra. One was in Karnataka, other was in Kerala. And we didn't get uh, either of them. Okay. Uh, so... Apart from Maharashtra state, do we plan to uh, expand in any other state as well or uh, are we talking with some other government, uh, you know, of other state government? Uh, so do we have any hopes or expectations that, you know, uh, we get tenders from other states as well? Well, we are open to opportunities uh, anywhere outside Maharashtra also. And as regards talking to state governments, you know, the licenses in the sector are uh, given out by the central regulator, which is the Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board. So it's, it's not something given by the state government. So whenever the PNGRB comes out with uh, licensing rounds, we look at uh, whatever area looks attractive and then put in our bids if we feel that it makes sense. So, sir, uh, as I said, uh, this, uh, you know, whichever, looks, uh, whichever area looks attractive, so, so far, in how many states have we submitted this tender? We have totally, I think we have put in uh, about seven or eight uh, bids till now. In, seven or eight bids? In maybe uh, 
two or three, three or four states. In three or four states, right? Yeah. And so out of this, how many states have we uh, got the tenders? I mean, have we got the orders? I got. We have only got one license through the bid round, which is uh, the district of Raigad in Maharashtra. Okay. And so, could you ask the operator? Uh, yeah. Sofali, I may be requested to come back in the queue for a follow-up, please. Yeah, this is my last thing. So, uh, you know, further, I don't have to come and follow up. Okay, uh, sure. So, hello. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, sir, uh, you said three to four states, right? Uh, which are, uh, could you please name uh, which are those states? Karnataka, Kerala, Maharashtra, Andhra, Madhya Pradesh also, if I recall. We had also looked at Rajasthan and UP. Goa, sorry, Goa also. So there are a lot more than three or four. Maharashtra, MP, UP and Goa, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, sir, thank you. I'll, I'll uh, get back in queue if I have something else. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vishnu Kumar from Swag Capital. Please go ahead. Very good evening and thanks for your time, sir. Uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on the gross margin uh, decline uh, quarter on quarter, that is December versus March quarter, uh, whether it's uh, on the pricing or the sourcing side, if you could just elaborate a little on that. Yeah, you must be aware this uh, oil price levels were down in the Q4 as compared to Q3. And our prices in commercial and industrial customer category are uh, indexed maybe with a lag to the alternate fuels like LSHA, SAFO or 19 kg LPG cylinders, etc. So if you analyze the revenues for Q4 versus Q3, the price variance for commercial and industrial put together is almost to the extent of rupees 26 crores. Negative. 26 crores. Negative 26 crores. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes, please. Yeah. So, uh, uh, now that the prices have started moving up, I mean, in general, crude has moved up uh, from the end of the, uh, I mean, if I take November, December prices, one month, monthly averages. So, will we see better margins again heading uh, uh, in the next couple of months, as in from uh, April, uh, May? Yes, we should expect, particularly with uh, what price also being relatively under control right now, we should expect margins improvement in industrial and commercial, barring a what is unforeseen okay. problems in exchange rates. Got it. So what is the typical lag in terms of uh, INC pricing? Is it one month or uh, slightly longer? It's about one month, not about longer. One. Okay. And uh, in terms of your spot gas pricing, uh, how was it uh, in Q3 and Q4? Uh, in Q3, it was approximately uh, 10-ish it was almost, uh, $10 per MMBTU on an average, whereas it has dropped down definitely which is less than 9 in Q4 on an average basis. Okay, so the entire gas almost we have about a 10% decline. Uh, so despite that, we did not get the benefit in INC uh, margins, is it? Or the pricing fell uh, even higher? The proportionate decrease in sales value or price variance was much more higher as we talked about earlier. So though benefit of uh, lesser spot was definitely to our account, probably drop in sales realization on proportionate basis was even higher. Got it, sir. And uh, specific, coming back to the OPEX part, uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, FI19 or overall cost had uh, gone up because of multiple various pointers. Uh, do you see that this kind of a trend will continue into FI20 also? Uh, or if you could just broadly guide us as to how much should we expect the average increase in the other expenses? It is expenses what we are talking on totality basis, which is a sum of variable expenditure as well as fixed or semi-fixed. Now, there are some at least four or five heads which are uh, variable in nature. Obviously, uh, they increase directly in proportion of increase in volumes. For example, power and fuel expenditure, uh, almost 100% variable with reference to CNG volumes. 
there is another two three years like uh, dispensing charges which are generally paid as rupees per kg terms that is also a variable expenditure so as cng volumes increase those expenditure also go up there are items relating to consumption of stores and spares once again something to do with cng with uh, capacity being utilized more and more there is a tendency to go up on those accounts also so naturally with substantial portion being variable the expenditure in totality are bound to go up not to speak of the general inflation rate in india uh, which will affect variable as well as fixed or semi fixed expenses uh, as a thumb rule at least uh, around 12 13% total affect goes up but that's a thumb rule and something similar trend may continue okay so at least 12 to 13% uh, i mean at least 4 or 5% over and above the volume growth you're expecting uh, it to go up so that's the general trend i mean may differ from year to year but generally uh, somewhere around that uh, increase is likely uh be- also because you also mentioned that you, are, you have to move a lot through lcvs uh, for the distribution to your daughter booster stations if that proportion continues will the growth even be even faster i mean in, in terms of opex costs uh because that also seems to be a, a trend a, a rising trend for you you are right however the sales from daughter booster compressors is much less in proportion as compared to online so though theoretically expenditure for lcv transportation may increase but uh, in the overall impact on entire opex will not be substantial on that account got it sir and uh, uh, this gives you an opening okay. remark uh, mr kumar uh, maybe request okay i'll come back in the queue thank you thank you the next question is from the line of tarun lakotia from kotex securities please go ahead yeah hi uh, thanks for taking my question uh, i have a, a, a one related to the, the rising cash and investments on your books so if i look at you know from the time of ipo to now your dividend payout has reduced from say 55 odd percent to 36 percent uh, while cash balance has now i mean cash and investments have increased to almost nine and a half billion so is there any uh, concrete plan to utilize these cash flows given that we don't have any new license areas beyond raigarh right now yeah there are plans number one a slight correction when we talk about uh, payout ratio at least at internally at company we take it the ratio inclusive of dividend distribution tax in that uh, respect the percentage will be higher than 36% definitely but that apart your point is taken with as on a comparative basis now next important question is with reference to cash which we have on hand uh, there is an important strategy exercise the company has undertaken right now there could be multiple opportunities which we will be thinking of uh, that is one of the primary reasons we are still holding on to the cash and not resorting to any excessive or uh, special dividend as such of course you will note that uh, we already announced a total dividend of 200% this year as compared to last two years of 190% so some increase in uh, dividend rate anyway we have done with avi uh, paid up capital so maybe after completing the strategy uh, exercise which we have undertaken we will take a fresh look at the entire surplus which is available with us also there are some contingent liabilities on the balance sheet which you must have seen at least in the previous year which are continuing as of now so we need to be cognizant of those facts also and the overall decision will be taken accordingly Uh, sir i understand that uh, you may not be able to share much about the strategy but if you can give us some uh, you know at least a qualitative insight like is there anything related to some inorganic opportunities uh, which you are evaluating or you know um, uh, 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 because i mean see if i look at your uh, total say cash profits in a year versus the capex requirement and the dividend payout there is still an accumulation which you are doing so maybe uh, if the opportunities are per seemingly limited uh is there also a thinking that you may do some buyback and you know uh, why not uh, buy the stock uh, when it is at somewhat you know uh, i mean uh, at least uh, the, given the kind of cash balance which you have uh, uh, got at the balance sheet right now the simple answer is we are open for everything first of all mm-hmm. uh, in organic growth also we will be open to subject to at what price we get those opportunities that is another and any other new initiative also it will be at least somewhat related to our existing business it's not that altogether different diversification will be undertaken 
And if, so if you can just share a couple of data points, uh, CAPEX for this year, guidance for next year, uh, fiscal 20, and uh, CNG volumes uh, in kgs for this quarter. Okay, CAPEX this year is around 360 crores. Uh, mm -hmm. Next year expectation as of now at least could be in the region of at least 450 crores because substantial increase will be there in expenditure relating to RAGAD also. And sales uh, kgs in CNG for the current quarter you want or? Yeah, that's right. Uh, CNG sales in kg, in crores kgs, it is 14 crores. Okay. This quarter. Okay. That's yeah, useful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference call, please limit your questions to two per participant. If you have any further questions, you may come back for a follow-up. The next question is from the line of Neeraj Mansinka from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. So just a book quick question. How much is the PMT uh, proportion for the CNG for the quarter and the Q3? PMT. Okay, we'll just come back to you. What's your, any other question you have? So this this six question on Q4 last year, Q4 this year, and Q3 this year. So all three, these three data points I wanted. That's all. Thank you. Uh, for current year, at least I can give you right now the figure. PMT is... Uh, 0.554 MMH CMD on an average for full year 1819. Okay, sir. And for Q3 it was 0.599. Maybe any other uh, quarters or something you want, we can come back to you offline. No, that's all. Thank you. But uh, you're telling that uh, the average of the year was lower than the Q3. Is that the right result? Or that number, that 0. 0.554 you gave was for Q4? 0. 0.554 is for entire financial year, 18, 19. Okay. Yeah. Okay, all right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gagan Dixit from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this, my question is regarding that uh, how this many state governments are like Delhi, Kerala are very active in financial support to the electric vector. Your thought on its potential risk? Um, excuse me, this is the operator. Uh, Mr. Kaga, uh, Mr. Dixit, your voice is not audible. Uh, your voice is breaking. Yeah, am I audible now? Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah, so my question is regarding that this now this uh, many state governments are pushing for the EV infrastructure like Delhi and Kerala. So what's your thought on the potential, any risk from the EV uh, you see, uh, I mean, in the next three to five years, especially on the best buses, something related to that? Any thought on that, sir? In the short term, we don't see too much of a risk. Medium term, I mean, four, five years period, there could be some penetration, but uh, our belief is that uh, it would be at the expense of diesel, most probably, and not uh, at the expense of uh, CNG. And uh, as regards buses running on EVs, uh, you know, on a trial basis, uh, the MMRD and BSC have run about uh, 20 odd electric buses in. Uh, Mumbai, in and around BKC, that experiment has been a commercial failure for them because they're not getting enough ticketing revenue to sustain the operation of those buses. So there are, there are a lot of challenges. Of course, the biggest one being the availability of charging infrastructure, etc. Hmm. So given all these points, we don't see it as a significant risk, at least in the short term. And sir, my last question is regarding that, uh, is this PNGRB is considering some network tariff of the your network in Mumbai, something like that? I, I understand the PNGRB is in the process of uh, uh, formulating and notifying the tariff regulations for CGD. Currently, the regulations uh, are not there. Hmm. Previous regulations were struck down by the Supreme Court in the IGL versus PNGRB case. Hmm. The PNGRB is yet to re-notify tariff regulations, uh, you know, in line with the Act. Hmm. So once that happens, then there will be a period of data filing, etc., tariff determination, hmm. which uh, may take a few months. Hmm. Yeah. 
So, sir, PNGRB, any thoughts, sir? How much time it might take uh, something for this, uh, their regulations, any any initial regulations should come? Like, any idea about it, sir? No, that's totally in the PNGRB's hands. So, we, we really can't comment on how soon or how slow that will come. Okay, okay, sir. That, that's from my end, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Tiwari from Antique Stock. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, hi, sir. Good evening. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so it's related to uh, basically marketing and infrastructure exclusivity for you in the in the current GS. So I suppose the marketing exclusivity has uh, ended. So when is the infrastructure exclusivity getting over? And then I'll like, you know, follow up after you have answered that. The GA1, which is Mumbai, completes its 25 years in uh, May 2020. So it's about a year from now. Okay. GA2 will be April 2030. GA3 will be April 2040. Okay, sir. So thanks a lot. Uh, sir, my uh, second question, which is a follow-up to that, is that given GA1, the infra exclusivity is also ending in May 2020 and marketing one is already like in over. So, uh, do you see a possibility of any other uh, competitor uh, coming into the market or is regulator of the view of introducing more competition in the same GA um, or maybe like, you know, OMCs uh, could consider like, you know, putting up CNG stations. So if you can give some color on that, and uh, then secondly, if, if suppose that happens, and uh, like, you know, um, if at all, like, you know, additional infrastructure doesn't come in, your infra itself is used. So then what would be the basis of uh, basically charging the tariff uh, if a third party uses your infra for carrying gas? Well, on your last question first, uh the principles of calculation of the tariff are yet to be notified by the PNGRB. And but if you, uh, you draw an analogy, the previous regulations, which were caused by the Supreme Court, offered a 14% post-tax return on your regulated assets. Right. So the tariff would be set at that level. So now we we don't know whether the regulator will use the same approach or a different approach, or 14% will go down to 12% or go to 15%. That's up to the regulator. So in today's day and time, suppose if like you know the new regulation is not notified, but there is a player who wants to enter, so then the char the charging of tariff would be in your hands, right? Like you know you will be able to determine the tariff and uh, ask the third party to pay tariff on the on those uh, like you know. Uh, so would it be like you know you will be uh, basically determining the tariff, or like you know somebody as like a regulator would be determining? How would it be uh, like you know, determined? So tariff is determined by the regulator. Right. No, in today's scenario, I mean, like when there is no notified regulation, suppose if a third party wants to enter, then who sets the tariff and what that tariff would be? Well, in such a case, and in case MGL decides to entertain such a marketer, it mm -hmm. will most probably be a mutually agreed negotiated tariff. Right, which will be somewhere around like 14% post-tax ROC regulation that uh, we used to have, right? Not, not necessarily, because mm -hmm. uh, right now, since the PNGRB has not formally declared us as a open uh, common carrier, uh -huh. the market here doesn't have a right to use our infrastructure. Right. So in terms of common carrier also, if uh, so what's the regulation like? If there is capacity in the pipeline, then only you have to offer common carrier capacity or you have to keep that capacity aside irrespective of uh, what volume you are carrying? As far as I recall, the regulations require entities to maintain some 25% uh, extra capacity to accommodate uh, third-party commodity sellers. Right. So in, uh, like, you know, the way we discuss the scenario now, um, do you do you foresee or do you have, like, you know, are you sensing any activity in the market which tells you that there could be an opportunity for a third party to enter, is not only in RGA but in GA, which are, like, you know, reaching maturity in terms of exclusivity? In theory, there could always be... Uh, you know, people interested in marketing. Yeah, and uh, many CGDs have already completed their three years, five years of exclusivity. We are not aware of uh, any entity formally approaching, you know, the CGD for uh, third party access. And right, we, sir. we have, as per the regulations, you know, notified all our entry, exit points, etc., capacity, etc., on our website as per regulatory requirements. Right, sir. But again, the, 
basic situation is we are not yet declared a common carrier, so which right. requirement in the act. Right, sir. So only after that, when you know such a scenario can uh, evolve. Right. Great, so that's really helpful. The second question is purely bookkeeping. You mentioned that you have 3,800 commercial and industrial consumers. So if you can give a breakup between uh, industrial and commercial of that 3,800. Well, large majority of them are commercial. Uh -huh. uh, industrial would be only about uh, 80 or so. 80? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Ahuja from Bank of Baroda Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, wanted some clarity on on the industrial and commercial volumes uh, in terms of pricing. Uh, we saw this quarter margins declining, uh, while simultaneously we also seen spot LNG prices also coming off sharply. So, how does uh, this? Translate, uh, you know, in, in for this quarter. I mean, currently running quarter of Q1 FY20 onwards. And do you see a recovery in margins, or uh, it's going to be uh, like difficult to predict right now? Yeah, we expect the improvement in margins with respect to industry and commercial in the current quarter. So you you said there is a pricing is based on a mix of FO and commercial LPG. Like yeah, it is predominantly LSH for industry. Right. And for commercial or restaurant categories, it is with reference to 19 kg cylinders. So, in this current quarter, like in the running month of April and May, we have seen spot energy prices declining far ahead of uh, the movement in, uh, in the opposite direction of the movement in LBG and uh, LSHS. So, that should be beneficial for us? Yes, you are right. That will be added advantage. Right. So, I'm, so moving to the next uh, question. Uh, so on the, on the CNG side, you know, we, we've seen, you mentioned a lot of reasons for the other expenses to move up, but you also, you also mentioned about the caskets, uh, that CNG being transferred into caskets for the new stations. Would this be primarily in Raigad? Like any new station you add like 5 to 10, you have 10 already and you're planning to add 5 to 10. Would, 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 like do we see caskets being used for like one to two years or uh, till when do we expect that? Yes, CNG sales is predominantly casket based or almost entire is casket based, no doubt about that. But at the same time, there are some pockets in GA1 and GA2 areas as well. Due to certain reasons, we do have daughter booster stations there, where transportation of gas is through LCVs. So, in a nutshell, can we say, what you mentioned earlier, I think, that the other expense component will continue to rise in the range of 8 to 10% per year? It will be a bit higher than that, maybe 12, 13 percent. Right. All right, sir. Thanks a lot. That was helpful. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kashyap Zaveri from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, so, sir, I joined uh, the call a bit late, uh, but if you could help me with, um, you know, the realizations in industrial and commercial, um, you know, segment, uh, how much was the uh, you know, sort of pressure uh, in terms of realization, if you could quantify. Uh, you're, you're talking of the sales realization? Uh, what is Q3 of this year? In case of commercial category, the sales realization was approximately 26 and a half, sorry, it was 36 uh, rupees or almost 37 rupees. Whereas in case of Q3, that is earlier quarter, it was almost 44 rupees per SCM. And uh, as in the previous question, when you highlighted that, you know, we should see improvement in this realizations uh, in the current quarter, which is Q1, uh, would it go back to the same level or uh, it would sort of somewhere in the middle? I think premature to say whether it will go back to that level, but definitely it's going to be higher, no doubt about that. Sure, sir, sure. Uh, that's it from my side, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vasim Shah from Capgro Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, I just wanted to know some of the some of the highlights uh, from the recent auction that that was conducted by the PNGRB, the tenth auction that was held two months back. So, if you could just share some highlights, so why was it that you guys didn't win any GAs, and was, were you guys being too aggressive or conservative, or was it that the other, other uh, bidders were being too aggressive. 
I, I suspect, I mean, uh, we, we believe rather that uh, the other bidders were uh, extremely aggressive in a lot of GAs. And our experience of uh, 24 years in this industry leads us to believe that, you know, creating this infrastructure, uh, it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, you can't, you, you need to be a bit realistic. So we, we were uh, slightly conservative. I'll say we are more realistic in our bidding numbers, but then many entities uh, bid extremely aggressively and they are the ones who got a lot of licenses. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manikanta Gare from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my question, sir. Uh, so may I check with uh, you what is the current... Excuse me, this is the operator. Uh, Mr. Gare, so your voice is not very audible. How is it now? A uh, little better, thank you. Hi, sir. Uh, so may I check with you what is the current pipeline utilization uh, pipe across the infra? Well, in a city gas distribution network, it's, it's a very difficult question to answer. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not like a linear transmission pipeline where you can say pipeline capacity I mean, is 30 mm CMD and I'm flowing 20 mm CMD. Our city gate stations are designed to have at least a 50% redundancy level. And uh, different, uh, and we have more than 5,000 kilometers of pipeline which are in a mesh form. They're in a grid form, you know, they are not linear. So different capacities will actually be there uh, corresponding to different pairs of entry and exit points in the network. Got it, sir. So, so once PNGRB announces that you are a common carrier, all of this mesh of pipelines, all of that would be announced as a, as a common carrier, right? Yes, if you look at our website, I mean, we have defined something called entry points and exit points as per, uh, which are required as per regulations. So each pair of entry and exit points will have, will have a certain capacity, basically. Okay, basically where I'm heading to, sir, uh, so there would be some set of pipelines in this mesh which would be working at full uh, utilization levels. So in that scenario, if a third party comes, uh, how would it work? Like uh, you, you will, uh, you, the third party can lay another pipeline in that area, or uh, how does it work? Not really, uh, because infrastructure exclusivity is ours, so it's only the authorized entity who can lay pipelines. But typically, this kind of scenario doesn't uh, happen. What happens is way much before it reaches uh, saturation, we do something called reinforcement of our network. We can either lay parallel lines, or we can loop the network to increase its capacity. So there are various ways in which uh, you can increase your operating pressure a little bit to give you more flow. So there are technical ways and means in which you can uh, augment the capacity. Okay, but, but I'm talking about a situation in which your infrastructure exclusively also gets over. Uh, in that case? Well, in the, I don't, the, the regulations are probably, I mean, they have a provision of a rollover of infrastructure exclusivity in blocks of 10 years. Of course, that's if you're not in... Uh, contravention of any of your regulatory obligations and we definitely are not in uh, default of any of our obligations. So we expect to get a rollover in GA1. Sure, sir. One last question from my side. Uh, so we have seen one experienced player uh, tying up with OEMs and utility companies uh, in Delhi. So are you also thinking anything of that sort uh, uh, in Mumbai? I, I agree you already mentioned that uh, EVs for us is a four to five year thingy. But uh, would you be thinking about uh, anything of this sort, or uh, it's still some time away for you? Uh, if it makes any commercial prudence, then yes. Uh, but uh, are there any uh, discussions or any thoughts going on in the board dis boardroom with respect to this, or when we ask about that? No, nothing concrete at this stage. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhijit Vora from Sher Khan. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. I just missed upon uh, the infrastructure exclusivity, which will be ending for GA1 in April 2020, right? Yeah, May 2020. May 2, and for GA2? In uh, 2030. Okay, okay. And we are, uh, the marketing exclusivity have already ended for GA1? Uh, there is a yes and no in it. As per... The regulations notified, the exclusivity regulations which are notified by the PNGRB, 
they gave us uh, in ga1 3 years of exclusivity ga2 5 years of exclusivity but uh, that period is over uh, when i think 8 years back okay but, uh, those regulations also are currently sub judies so we really we really can't say they are under challenge in the delhi high court right now okay so and uh, our understanding is for your marketing exclusivity also to get over as per the act there is a formal requirement of uh, declaring an entity as a common carrier by a formal notification and by following a particular process okay which is uh, yet to happen okay okay and uh, i just missed on one more point like the sales relation the was 37 rupees per sm scm versus 44 rupees per scm for the entire uh, industrial and uh, commercial customers right it was only for commercial category okay only for commercial category yeah. okay so, okay thank you sir thank you the next question is on the line of reena shah from ashika stock broking please go ahead hello hello uh, yes please yeah sir i wanted to know that uh, yes you have guided the volume growth of 6 to 7 percent going forward i wanted a bifurcation on cng png domestic or industrial if you can get something the cng is uh, at that 6 to 7 percent itself okay domestic and commercial would be a couple of percentage points higher okay industry would be one or two percentage points lower okay okay and sir uh, any clue on how you are looking at cng conversions growth like uh, any view on that cng conversions have been uh, relatively steady we're hitting about uh, numbers between 6 and 7000 every month okay and uh, big chunk of that about 4000 odd happens from the auto rickshaw segment hmm? 2000 odd happens uh, in the four wheeler segment which is uh, both private cars and uh, aggregators and taxis etc okay very little of uh, commercial vehicles or goods vehicles convert in the city of mumbai okay so trucks and all this uh, these doesn't come especially in mumbai they come but their numbers are very small okay okay that is it thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of rajesh agarwal from money or advisors please go ahead so, so my question on the cng conversion is i had uh, uh, said already my only one question is uh, for the new geography area whether it will be uh, through pipeline or it through it through will be caskets uh, are you asking about raigad ha ah, raigad yes raigad initially it is through caskets okay then about a year or two we will have our uh, city gate stations and uh, some steel trunk pipelines operational okay in which case uh, some of the load will then be taken over by pipelines the residual load will remain on uh, caskets till such time our pipeline reach there by uh, what time sir well raigad is a very large area so almost 7000 square kilometers so there may be some places which are you know it is financially prudent to serve them by cascades rather than pipelines because we want to lay a 50 km pipeline okay to cater to two or three cng stations okay it would be better to operate those by cascades what can be the potential in the raigad market for the cng vehicles in the industrial the current estimates are about uh, between 0.6 and 0.7 mm cmd okay and for the new geographical uh, which we have bidded in that would be cascade or it would be through pipeline डोमेस्टिक you have access to gas at uh, the first priority for apm gas that only you are entitled to isn't it uh, any potential new entrant would not get access to that gas is that not the biggest entry barrier for a new player yes that is a very big entry barrier because as the government policy stands today it is only the authorized entity who is uh, having access to domestically produced gas and that too only for sale within its own gf and given the shortage this apm gas actually is probably going to more likely to decline rather than rise this policy is unlikely to change i presume 
the policy has uh, stood the test of time. And even the previous government followed the same policy, the current government followed the same yes. policy. And if you look at the volume growth rate in this segment, you know, currently uh, about 60 odd MMS CMD of domestically produced gas is sold by Gale in the country and the CNG and domestic household segments put together is not more than 13 or 14 MMS CMD. And these are retail segments in which uh, sales volumes ramp up pretty uh, gradually. In each domestic household you connect takes half a cubic meter. Each vehicle, rickshaw or taxi you convert will take 5 kgs. So it's not like any, you know starting a large industrial or a power plant where you know there can be step jumps and volumes. So the ramp up will happen gradually. And even if all the 9-10 round cities come up, the, we believe that there is enough uh, residual APM gas uh, available because since we are on the top priority, even if domestic production does not increase, we will continue to get the gas at the expense of the segments which are on the lower priority. So are you basically, because that was actually going to be my next question, that uh, your rough mix of PMT and uh, the uh, gas for which the price is linked to these uh, prices in US, uh, UK, Canada and Russia, that price which changes every six months, that mix appears to be around 78, 22. You don't see that increasing significantly in, away from the cheaper price gas in a hurry. Given that, you, uh, as you said, that a 60 mm assembly of gas available, even if it falls, you guys are your first priority and just 13 to 14 mm assembly. But uh, as these more, more CGD uh, GAs start operating, do you see that, that becoming a risk? Because now then the demand for that gas will keep rising. You see, even if uh, all the awarded GAs start growing at double-digit growth rates or whatever, you know, you need to consider the fact that the base is zero. So yeah. it will take quite some time, many, many years, for it to reach any significant level to you know, impact the uh, volume availability for CGD. The second thing about the mix, uh, the other thing which we need to keep in mind is uh, probably the PMT contracts expire sometime in 2019 yeah. or so. So after that, uh, and we, we don't know what exactly the decision of the government will be, and will it be uh, zero PMT and everything will be then called APM, in which case there might be a price advantage for us, but that, that is something which we have just have to wait and see. But which at least initially will have to be passed on to the consumer either way. Yes, so that uh, lever is always there. We have substantial headroom in our pricing, even with uh, you know, the domestic price goes up or uh, if even if there is, you know, we have to accommodate a small percentage of LNG into this mix, we don't foresee too much of an issue. So to summarize, can we say that at least in the near future, this competition as well as, as things stand, as well as significant increase in gas cost doesn't appear to be a risk? Yes, that's our current belief. Yeah, okay. Thanks a lot. Things stand for, can we, are, are we going to take more questions or uh, should we... So we don't have anybody in the queue. Okay, great. So uh, thanks a lot to the management for answering all these questions. And thank you to everyone. So we'll end the call here. I, I think if management wants to have uh, say, uh, summarize before we end the call. Yeah, I think this financial year 2018-19 uh, was an excellent financial year. The sales volume growth was 9% plus. At the same time, there was some improvement in the overall EBITDA margin rupees per HCM. Uh, so we are hoping to continue to do better next year and thank you very much for joining all of you. Thanks, thanks. Thank you very much, sir.